I come out here and I sit and I reflect and I create and just grasp where I'm at in my career right now. I'm that comic where so many comics look up to me. You see what I'm saying? And the ones I looked up to, I've already passed. So now they're probably looking up to me. I fall under a category of a very special type of comic. And that comic is a comic that doesn't fail. I'm on top. Wherever I go, they call me legend. Please put your hands together for the one and only Rich Vaughn. Tired. I was uh, I was in uh, Cuba all day at a Domino's tournament. So <laughs> I bought this uh, shirt at Kohl's. Kohl's is my favorite place on the planet. I'm telling you, you could be in the back of the store at Kohl's and have an item that costs a hundred dollars, and by the time you get to the register, it, it's free. <laughs> Thank you for coming out tonight. Just to uh, do a special here in Jersey. I, I, you know, I'm from Jersey. I, you know, I love doing comedy. I really, I really love doing this. My wife's a comic. All my friends are comics. This is my passion. All, all day long, I think comedy. I love it. If it came between my career and one of my kids, they, they would have to draw straws, okay? <laughs> this is my passion. So I gotta tell you the story. I was... Uh, I was doing a club a couple weeks ago, and on Thursday night is their new talent night. So I had to go up at the end of the show after like an hour and a half of horribleness, and, <laughs> and, I, and I had to headline the show. So I'm talking to this guy in the audience. I go, what do you do? And he said, I was on stage earlier. I was up there earlier doing comedy. I go, really, you're gonna be a comic? I go, how old are you? He said, I'm 53. I go, you're starting comedy at 53? He said, no, it's on my bucket list. Right? This is his bucket list. This is my life. His bucket list. All right? I've always wanted to fly a plane, but I've never walked into the cockpit and said, hey, can I take it around the block a couple times? <laughs> right? So I, I got a little pissed off, so I started trashing him. Not that bad, but really bad. <laughs> I'm like trashing this guy. And then, I, then out of nowhere, he says, well, I don't have health insurance, and I have a brain tumor. Oh. Yeah, he used the old fucking brain tumor card. <laughs> so now the audience hates me, because I just trash this guy for 10 fucking minutes. Right? And I'm like, I'm like, how am I gonna get the crowd back? I'm like, this is, it was so early in the show, I'm going, they hate, like, right now how you're staring at me waiting for the punchline, <laughs> pretend there's all hatred in your eyes. <laughs> they hated me. So out of nowhere, some guy in the audience raises his hand and yells over to that guy and says, look, I don't care if you have health insurance, come to my office this week, we'll take some x-rays, and we'll see what we can do. I was like, oh, thank God, right? <laughs> so I, I look over at the guy, I go, are you a brain surgeon? He said, no, I'm an orthopedic, but brain surgery's on my bucket list. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it, it worked out. <laughs> I'm getting old, man. I think the older I get, and, I, and I'm not, Haas, I'm just getting a little more cranky in life. I, I don't have time for small, t any of it. Like the other day I was in this restaurant in uh, this diner in Jersey and I asked the waitress, I go, do you have turkey burgers? And uh, she said, uh, we used to. <laughs> really? Oh, why don't you sit down and we'll reminisce the good old days. <laughs> You know, when the lines were forming outside. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't deal with my neighbors. It's like I live in small talk village with them. I can't, I can't deal with Like the other day, 
I was rolling my luggage. I'm rolling my luggage to the car. And one of my dumb neighbors, right, g going on a trip. <laughs> they got going on, going on a trip, huh? I'm like, nope. <laughs> Ever since my dog died, I like taking my suitcase out for a walk. I got tired of dragging that dead fuck around the parking lot. <laughs> I, uh, I live in a townhouse community. I live in a townhouse community, and, and I own my townhouse. And a lot of my neighbors are renters, and I don't really want to talk to them because I don't want them to think that, how do I put that I also failed in life, okay? <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> so I can't come right out and say, you know, I try to be nice. I can't come out and say, hey, fuck off. I'm a homeowner. I try to be. <laughs> All right? Yeah, get away. Get away. <laughs> I try to be nice. Don't walk by. go, how you doing? I go, well, I guess as well as you can when you're thinking about refinancing. <laughs> 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 I even tell my seven-year-old daughter, I go, look, you cannot play with the renter kids <laughs> because they have dirty faces and they'll steal your toys, okay? <laughs> That's what they do. And I, and I tell her, if they touch you, you'll grow up to be ugly and unpopular. <laughs> and she's seven years old, so we really stress popularity <laughs> way, way above academics. That's why we give her one meal a day and laxatives <laughs> so she could grow up to be skinny and beautiful <laughs> and likable. <laughs> and when she walks on a plane, people don't go, oh my God, don't sit next to me. <laughs> okay. Please, please God, please don't, don't, don't. Okay, beautiful. And when she's in high school, she could be the head cheerleader, the main cheerleader, the one on top of the pyramid. <laughs> Not the cheerleader on the bottom of the pyramid. <laughs> Nobody gives a fuck about the cheerleader on the bottom of the pyramid. You don't, you don't go look at a house and go, nice foundation. <laughs> you go, beautiful house. That's my daughter because we taught her how to throw up after meals. <laughs> We're good parents. We had a horrible winter. After every goddamn snowstorm, one of my neighbors would call me, have you seen all the snow? <laughs> look outside, have you seen the snow? Look, I'll, I'll hold on, go to the window, look. Have you seen it? There's snow, ever it's insane. There's snow everywhere, don't. Matter of fact, don't look out the window, don't. Don't leave the house. It's the winter, stupid. I never get a call in the spring, ever. Have you seen all the flowers? <laughs> look outside, just look. There's tulips everywhere. Last year on New Jersey Network News, on New Jersey Network News last year, they said it was the 10th, the 10th worst winter in New Jersey history, the 10th. They were going by snowfall. They're going by snowfall. Does, so does that determine what makes it a bad winter, snowfall? Because if you go back in time, I'm sure there's people that would disagree with that, right? Say you're talking to somebody from 1929. <laughs> go, how was your winter? Well, in, in 29, we had a pretty bad winter. We, we had no food. We, we, we had no clothing. We lost all of our money and our home. And my father threw himself to his death out of his office building window. But did you have a lot of snow? <laughs> right? Say, 
Say you go further back in time. Say you're talking to a young lady in the 1600s, 1600 Salem Mass, and you go, how was your winter? <laughs> well, well, it was going pretty well. <laughs> then I was at this party, and I did two magic tricks. <laughs> so, so you guys don't understand that one. Because you're not from this country, so I'm going to explain this to you. <laughs> what country are you from? You guys, what country are you from? Here? Okay, well, anyhow, I'm going to explain it anyhow. <laughs> and pretend you're not from this goddamn country. In the 1600s, in Salem, Mass, they were burning uh, young ladies at the stake during these Salem witch trials. And magic wasn't really big then. So, like, say you're at a party and you make a dove appear, most likely there's going to be kindling at your feet. <laughs> All right, let's go further back in time. Jesus, how was your winter? Well, it was going pretty well. Uh, uh, we celebrated my birthday. We, uh, me, me and a bunch of guys went out uh, for, for New Year's Eve. We had a good time on New Year's Eve. Oh, my fucking spring sucked. Uh, see, in the spring... Oh, God, I love living in Jersey, but it is too expensive in this goddamn state. It is, it is, oh my God. My wife and I, we just got a life insurance policy on each other, right? Uh, and, I, and I'm telling, I'm not, I lay in bed at night, like daydreaming, staring at the ceiling, right? And I'll look at her and she's like a brand new RV, you know? You know what I'm saying, right? In the beginning, when my wife and I first got married, it was so, she would say, like, draw me a bath, and, and I'd fill the tub with hot water, perfect temperature, and I'd put bubbles and suds in it, and candles and incense around it, and I'd put flowers, it was beautiful. Now she says, draw me a bath, and I, I just turn the water on, and I leave a radio and a blender on the tub. <laughs> Oh, a mirror that makes you look bigger than you are. Some razor blades in the scene from The Godfather. My wife lays in bed. You know, we lay in bed together, we watch our shows, and, 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 when, and when she eats an apple, it's like every bite is like a fucking, someone hitting an anvil in my head. Every goddamn bite is like, pow, pow. I, I swear to God, I feel like I'm laying next to a horse. I'm not bullshitting. If I have to hand her the apple, I have to hand it to her like this, right? It's so goddamn loud. I'm not lying. I could be downstairs on the computer and I hear old stable face upstairs <laughs> fucking gnawing on potato chips. Sometimes I'll be on the computer, I'm not lying, and she'll come behind me to stand there eating potato chips and it's like firecrackers. And I just wanna take the back of her head and the bag of chips and just suffocate her a little, not, you know, not a, just enough where a couple chips go in and she learns a lesson. I'm not, you know what I mean? I mean, don't get me wrong, I like to collect, but I won't, you know, I'm not gonna collect that way. Just enough. To, 
and, and we fight sometimes. We have brutal, brutal fights. I love her. Don't get me wrong. I love her. But you know, some, we had a fight two weeks ago, and it was a blowout. I'm like, just move out. Get out. I go, here's $25,000. Leave. And she said, that's not enough. Here's a little tip, folks. Never make your final offer first. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's 10,000 get out that's not enough I can go up to 25 uh, the problem is I, she's from Canada I, 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 met a, I went low budget and I married a Canadian <laughs> and I'm a Jew and she's not Jew I, I, can't, afford, I can't afford a Jew bro right <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to walk into Coles with a Jew. <laughs> My wife, she grew up on a farm. Right? And I remember the first time I had to meet her uh, family. I had to go, I'd never been to a farm. I'm, I'm a Jew from New Jersey, right? I've eaten corn. I've had some... Delicious New Jersey tomatoes. <laughs> Never been to a farm, but I'm a team player, so I went. And we're at the farm, I'm meeting the family. They never met a Jew, so now they're all taking turns touching me. <laughs> they, they feel the same. <laughs> then the mom's like, do you know Woody Allen? <laughs> so the father then says to me, you know, after a couple hours, he says, uh, you know, let's go out to the bar and I'll show you to milk a cow. Like, what? I want to milk, you know what I mean? But I'm a guest, so I got to do it. So now we're in the barn, we're milking a cow. And I guess it's going well for a cow milking, I don't know. <laughs> then all of a sudden, he squirted me with a little milk. Right? I'm like, I'm no punk, I'm not going to let him bitch me like that. <laughs> in the back of his head, look at this little Jewish punk. I, so I squirted him back, right? And then we start squirting each other, right? And then we start laughing and giggling, right? And, and then he started tickling me and... Uh, we, uh, we, we started play wrestling. And, and then he raped me in the barn. And I was screaming at the top of my lungs, but nobody in the house could hear me because they were all eating fucking apples. <laughs> has, has that ever happened to anybody else? <laughs> it's so much money to live in, in Jersey. This goddamn Governor Christie, this buffet molester. Uh, <laughs> This is off the record. I know a lot of people, so we got to keep this here. But I heard he took one-fifth of the funding from Hurricane Sandy and, and bought pies. <laughs> the Jersey Turnpike, I drove three exits on the Jersey Turnpike, and it was $8 for three exits. $8. If you drive the whole Jersey Turnpike now, when you get to the end, you have to give them your car. <laughs> and there better be pies in the trunk. Because there's no toll booth. Just the governor stands there and he sniffs. And if he smells a pie, he takes a bite out of the back of your car. And he, get, he, get, he, he gets spit the metal out like there's sunflower seed shells. Like that's how good he is. The pie will stay in his mouth and go like that and the metal will fly out, but the pie will stay in his mouth, just for real. <laughs> He's like, metal. <laughs> the goddamn tunnels into New York now, the tunnels, the Lincoln and Holland Tunnel and the bridge, used to be $8, used to be $8. It's $14 now. It's insane. It went from eight to 14. I can't even imagine that meeting. 
How about nine or 11? No, nah, we're not gonna fuck around with odd numbers. Uh, <laughs> It went from 8 to 14, and you go through the tunnel. It's not like they don't wash your car. You would think maybe one or two brushes would come out, or maybe at the toll booth they give you a bumper sticker. Nothing. They raised their price over 50%. No other business on this planet could raise their price over 50% and stay in business. That would be impossible. If you went to a restaurant, went back the next week and the prices were 50% higher, you'd walk out. You wouldn't pay, right? What's your name, sir? John? Joe. Joe, Joe. say where you get your haircut. Say they raised the price to $6, right? <laughs> See what I'm saying? You're like, bullshit, this is a $4 haircut. And I'll find somebody else in a van to do it. <laughs> I shouldn't talk about a haircut. Look at it. I look like a Roman nickel. <laughs> when I go down on my wife, I go, I bring you news from the north. <laughs> it's a beautiful pointed sleeve tunic you're wearing. Goddamn airlines, pieces of shit. They are pieces of shit. No other business on this planet could treat the consumer the way the airlines do and stay in business. That would be impossible. You're, I'm telling you, they would be, you're never, never will you be in a restaurant and a waitress walks up to you and yells, sit the fuck up straight. You better turn that goddamn phone off. <laughs> Sit down. You cannot go to the bathroom till after your appetizers. <laughs> so United, they took away the pretzels. Like some CEO that makes probably five to eight million a year sat in a boardroom going, you know what's gonna turn this around? <laughs> you know those four stale pretzels? <laughs> Look, I didn't mind when they took away the blankets that had three weeks of other people's DNA on them. <laughs> if, listen to me. If you ever want to get away with a murder, just shake an airline blanket over the dead body. Like, <laughs> swear to God. <laughs> right? And, and those pillows, those pillows were just as disgusting. I would never stick my head on one of those pillows. I'm not long. I'm a Jew. I'd rather stick my head in a Lebanese tent wearing a yarmulke, okay? <laughs> They're all no goddamn good. They're no good. The banks, Bank of America, they're arrogant. For, they're not in every state in this country. Bank of America? Not really? How about in some of America? How about that? <laughs> Fucking arrogant douchebags. <laughs> I was in Bank of America the other day, I'm not lying. I went to deposit, deposit a check, and they asked me for ID. Are you telling me other people are trying to put money in my account? <laughs> and, and you're telling them no? Are you crazy? Right? I'm me, it's me. I, I made a large deposit, so, so the supervisor came up to me and said, I have good news for you. I said, did Israel extinguish Palestine? <laughs> she said, no, I said, was my wife hit by a bus? <laughs> I, go, I, go, I go, what's the good news, cookie? That's how I talk when I make a large deposit. She said, after this deposit, you are, now, you are now a platinum member at Bank of America. And I'm not trying to talk down to you guys, even though I'm at a whole nother level. I go, what is that in title? 
She said, we raise your interest rate. I said, to what? She said, point? That's where she lost me. <laughs> like, she could say point, and I could come back a year later, and it's still not 1%. She said, point 45%. That's what I'm getting as a platinum member. Point 45%. When my seven was born, I put $5,000 into her college fund. By the time she goes to college, she will have $5,013. Unless, unless she goes through the Lincoln Tunnel, then she'll only have $4,999. That was a math joke. <laughs> a lot of people have been coming up to me going, you don't do enough math material. <laughs> My house caught on fire a couple years ago. So, I'm working in Sacramento, California. I'm in Sacramento. And my wife calls me and says, I smell smoke. So I said, go on the internet and see if there's a big fire in town because I have a lot of uh, background in profiling, because I've read all of John Douglas's books on profiling, and I've watched every episode of Law and Order. <laughs> so I know a lot about profiling. Like if I were to walk into a house and see a dead body, I would go, don't touch it. <laughs> or if I opened a dumpster and just saw a head in there, I would go, foul play. These are some of the things I've learned as a profiler. So then, then my wife calls me an hour later and says, our house is burning. I go, well, you didn't tell me you smelled the smoke in our house because she has no profiling skills. She doesn't watch those shows. She watches the housewife shows so she's good at talking behind the backs of other females. <laughs> and now I gotta blow out the weekend and fly home on a red eye on Friday night, which I don't know why I did. I could have waited to Sunday, because when I got home Saturday morning, this is what I did. Looks burnt to me. <laughs> so then the detective, the detective starts questioning me, right? You know what I mean? And we're basically in the same line of work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Show a little professional courtesy. <laughs> you know? Okay, I know you went to school, but I have skills. <laughs> but he's really a good detective, and he's really questioned me pretty hard. And I'm starting to think, maybe I did do this. <laughs> I think it was me. <laughs> now the fire started on our balcony and it went up like four or five units uh, got taken out. So now we're dealing with all these, all these insurance companies and they just want to sue anybody. They don't give a shit. A faulty appliance, negligence, anything so they don't have to pay. So now they're questioning me, and they said, well, did you have a grill on your balcony? I go, no, we weren't allowed to grill. But if we did have a grill on our balcony, the only way there wouldn't be a grill is if it was a wooden grill, <laughs> because a metal grill would still be on the fucking balcony, okay? Because <laughs> it wouldn't have melted away to nothing. And I'm sure in the middle of the fire, my wife didn't stop. Three fire companies go, hold on. Let me get that out of here. <laughs> so then the insurance company asked me, he goes, did you have a coffee pot on your balcony? <laughs> the fuck would it, what? <laughs> yeah, my wife and I, we, we make coffee in our balcony and then we both lay in bathtubs pretending we're in a Cialis commercial <laughs> overlooking our parking lot. Then at the time, my daughter was four years old, 
And they asked, well, what was your four-year-old doing at the time? Well, it was Friday, so obviously she's in the meth lab. <laughs> People in life are greedy. People are greedy. People want more than they deserve. And that's one thing in life, I'm honest. I might be a creep, but I'm honest. And I just wanted what was owed to me, that's all. I lost some clothes, some electronics. Uh, I had a Monet in a Warhol. <laughs> so then we moved back into the place. We moved back into the, uh, they, they remodeled it. And my daughter and I, uh, she's older now, we're, she's like seven, and we're watching on TV, and she sees this uh, birdhouse that you could put on your outside window with suction cups and look inside the birdhouse and watch the bird nest, lay eggs, and live a bird's life, okay? So I bought it for her last April. Not one fucking bird <laughs> has moved into our house. Not one, and, and it's not like it's a Section 8 birdhouse. <laughs> not even a bird I think has flown by and stopped in to get some quick bird pussy, you know what I mean? <laughs> nothing, nothing. So now my daughter says, well, do you want a puppy, daddy? I'm like, to tell you the truth, I don't really want a seven-year-old, but <laughs> you're here. So I go try to get her a puppy. It's a true story. One of these big uh, pet stores, they were having an adoption day. So we go there, and there's like 50 cages this big. So I see one, my daughter loves it, I loved it. It had a great temperament, it was you know, happy. So I go, that dog. So I said to the lady, this, I go, that dog, throw it in the car, get me a, a bowl and some uh, dog food. Get the good dog food, that's not gonna kill the dog from China. <laughs> then she says to me, that's not how it works. You have to fill out four pages of paperwork and then we have to come to your house and see how you live. I'm like, look, we don't live in a mansion, but I promise you, our house is nicer than that fucking cage. <laughs> what are you gonna do, come to my house and like Michael Vick's gonna answer the door? <laughs> right, there's gonna be puppy heads mounted across. Oh, look at that one, I got that one in Vermont. So what's gonna happen, I'm scared, is they're gonna come to my house, we're gonna do all the paperwork, everything's gonna be fine, and right before they leave, they're gonna look and go, oh, you can't get a bird to move in with you, <laughs> but yet you want a puppy. That joke never really gets a big laugh, but <laughs> it's kind of a good story, you know what I mean? It's got birds and kids and puppies. Just a lot of beautifulness, if that's even a word in that story. Like a lot of comics will do a bit and want a big laugh at the end. Not me. I just want the crowd to go, that was beautiful. He tried to get his daughter a bird and a puppy and he didn't get her shit. How many kids you got? Three, me too. You love them all. God, definitely. But which one do you like a little better? <laughs> like, say you're on a raft, right? <laughs> I have three daughters. Jessica's 24, Ellen's 22, and Raina's seven. Jessica, my 24-year-old, is my favorite, hands down. I tell Ellen, the 22-year-old, I go, look, I like you. <laughs> Not Neil as much as I like Jessica, but at least you're in second place because I really don't give a shit about the seven-year-old. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I have a 24-year-old and a 22-year-old. What's the seven-year-old going to do to impress me? I've seen it all. <laughs> Daddy, look what I drew. It's a house. No. <laughs> 
No, it's scribble, okay? <laughs> Your mom might tell you it's a house, but I'm not gonna bullshit you. It's a house if a tornado blew through it, but <laughs> it's scribble. Everything you draw is scribble. You know why? You're a scribbler. You don't respect the lines. <laughs> Quit crying, man up. All right, let me ask you this. Would you live in it? <laughs> no, because you didn't draw a front door. <laughs> the only thing that could live in this house would be another Salvador Dali painting. <laughs> I didn't expect anybody to laugh at that. I love my seven-year-old. My seven-year-old, hands down, is the cutest. She, like, when my older daughters call me, I don't even answer the phone, because that's going to cost me $300, okay? <laughs> my seven-year-old, I just, I love her to death. A couple weeks ago, she lost a tooth. So I am the tooth fairy, and I have to put $5 under her pillow. I even have the outfit. I have the whole tooth fairy outfit. And I wear it sometimes when she doesn't even lose a tooth. <laughs> so she, I had to put $5, this is a true story, I had to put $5 under her pillow. So I went into her room the next morning, and then when she gets up, she watches TV with her back, like laying on the side, watching uh, Wild Kratz or whatever. And I realized I didn't put the money under her pillow. So I took $5 out of her bank. <laughs> and I slipped it under the pillow. Not only can she draw, she can't count. <laughs> I'm glad she's seven now. When she was like four or five, it's tougher. Remember when your kids were four or five? How, like I, I tell my kid when she was four years old, go get dressed, we're in a rush. That's a three hour delay. <laughs> She'd go up and put on every fucking outfit she owns. So sometimes I had to get her dressed or my wife had to get her dressed, right? One time I'm getting her dressed, so I'm pulling out her clothes. I pull out her Dora underwear. I said, wear these. They're really cute. They're cute. Wear these. I put on her pants, her shirt. We left the house. No big deal. The next week I was dropping off at school and the teacher said, Rainy, you look pretty today. She said, I'm wearing daddy's favorite underwear. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know this kid. I'm, I'm the driver. Their father's a homeowner and a platinum member. I go to Walmart when I have low self-esteem. <laughs> and, I, and I walk around and I point, I go, at least I'm not him. And I, and I pray I don't see anybody pointing back at me. <laughs> that, that family, that family has more money than, than they could ever spend in a hundred lifetimes. When, it, really, if you think of, when's enough enough? When is enough enough for, for people? Like, they can't give their employees uh, health insurance, they, they have to buy their own uniforms. They, they are really pieces of shit, in my opinion. <laughs> but they're convenient. <laughs> so that's why I go. I mean, where else can you go at two in the morning buy mustard, golf balls, and a chainsaw? <laughs> I come out of Walmart, and these two girls come out. You know, one little skinny girl, and. The other one was probably about 800 pounds. <laughs> and she was wearing a, a halter top. At least I think it was a halter top. Maybe it was a uh, shirt she put on that morning and, and just grew out of it by the afternoon. <laughs> right? Uh, as, as I'm walking by him, the big one said to the skinny one in a real, like, thuggy voice, you know what I forgot to did? Yeah. yeah, conjugate a verb. 
But every now and then, every now and then, you'll see like a real hot girl in Walmart, and I'm sure a female will see a hot guy, I'm talking from my perspective. You see like a real hot girl, you go, whoa, what is, what? But there's always like one little thing wrong with her. <laughs> like, like she walks like she has a wooden leg. <laughs> but she doesn't have a wooden leg. When she was a kid, she got a splinter and her family neglected to do anything about it because they were renters. So now... <laughs> so now she drags this dead spaghetti leg behind her. But she's so hot, so you're, you're having sex with her, but you keep popping out because her rubber band leg keeps falling off the side of the bed. But she can't feel it, so you gotta tell her, can you please lift that dead puppet leg back on the bed so I can finish fucking the other two thirds of you? Or, or you'll see like a real hot girl from one side and, and then she'll turn and something like, like her eyelid will have like too much extra skin in it. Like, like when it's closed, it looks like a bunched up curtain. But she's so hot, you don't care and you're having sex with her. And the whole time you're looking at her having sex, all you're thinking is, can you please keep your Forrest Whitaker eye open? So you give her a piece of scotch tape. And... Come on. There's not another comic on the planet that has done a dead eye Forrest Whitaker joke. <laughs> People don't know how to make relationships work. How long you been going with her? You're just friends? She's smoking. Something, hook him up. In the car, just anything. Huh? <laughs> Look how he's in shape, he's good looking. I mean, I can't tell if he's good looking, but. He seems like he could be. What's that? She's, you're just starting off as friends and you're trying to work it into, listen to me. You want me to tell you how you can get laid with her? Listen to me. I'm a pro at, what's your name? Chris, I guarantee you'll get laid if you do this. Say to her towards the end of the show, say let's go out dancing after this or go to another club. And she'll say okay and order a glass of wine. And right before you're ready to leave, by accident, spill the wine on your shirt, right? And go, all right, before we go out, let me go back to my house and get another shirt. And then we'll go out. So then you go to your house, go in the closet, and, and, and bring out a wrinkled shirt, right? Go, hold on, let me iron this, then we'll get out of here. Right? So as you're ironing it, uh, go to her, does this look wrinkled? As she goes to look, take the iron and go, pow, right on the side of her head. <laughs> Right? Just, not real, just boom, just. <laughs> just enough, you don't want to knock her out, you just want to daze her. <laughs> I keep a travel iron in the car. <laughs> are you going out with her? Yeah, she's beautiful. Listen to me, how old are you? 17. Oh, that's why you took out for fries. That's, that's your whole allowance. And how old are you? 19. <laughs> Set, looks like we have a school teacher. Now, I'm not talking about you in general. I'm just talking about a 19-year-old. Remember those days, ladies, 19? No, you're right. That, 19, that shit's as tight as a nickel. Listen to me. It's, it's like a little seashell down there. You put your ear to it, you can hear her mother yell, clean your room. You're 17, she's 19. You wanna hold on to her for life? I'm a, listen, I'm a pro at this shit. And this works for everybody, male, female, female. All you have to do is find her weakness, her insecurity, 
and then boom, you swoop in and take advantage of it. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you find out what fucks with her, boom, boom. Say you're with a girl and she thinks her hand is just a little too big, you have to really make her believe, bitch, you got the biggest hand on the planet. <laughs> you are lucky I'm fucking you with that frying pan hand. I should be cooking eggs on your hand. But I love you for who you are. I love you for you. Although you did deceive me when I first met you and you waved with your good hand. <laughs> then you got out of the car and I thought you were dragging a canoe. Uh, last month, I celebrated 29 years sober with no alcohol or drugs. 29 years, thank you. I, I was smoking crack 10 years before she was born. Yeah, 29 years sober, 10 years off of cigarettes, uh, 25 years off of red meat. Uh, I have nothing. <laughs> All I have is golf. I don't even know why I play golf. I should just buy $10 worth of balls, walk by the woods and throw them in. <laughs> why do I play? 29 years. Even though I haven't got high for 29 years, I still have some of the habits and behaviors of a drug addict. Sometimes I act like a drug addict even though I don't do drugs. I have the behaviors. A couple of weeks ago, I was, driving, I was driving through Dunkin' Donuts through the drive-thru and I order a coffee and a donut. So I put my order in, I pull up to the window, the guy opens the window and he's holding the coffee and the donut. And I'm holding the money. <laughs> right? And I'm looking at him and he's looking at me. I'm going, look pal, I'm not giving you the money <laughs> till you give me at least the donut, okay? <laughs> right? I, don't, I don't know you like that. Give me the donut, I'll give you some money. Give me the coffee, I'll finish payment and get the hell out of here. If the product's good, I'll come back. We argued for like five minutes, I swear to God. He finally gave me the donut and I drove away. You, you cannot trust everyone. Here's the thing when it comes to, to addiction and sex and all of that crap. There's a fine line in everything you do. There's a fine line in, in drugs, alcohol, uh, eating, gambling, spending. There's a fine line between social and addiction. And once you cross that fine line into addiction, there's no turning back. You could be a social drinker, same with sex. You know, there's a fine line. Look, every now and then, Everybody likes a little something in their ass. Like, you know, <laughs> say, you know, like, like, you know, like a finger or, or a pencil, you know, dur dur during a birthday or an anniversary, you know what I mean? Something to make you aware of who's behind you in bed. You know, like, oh, I forgot it was my birthday. Oh, oh, well, happy birthday to me. Okay, this is a true story. <laughs> this guy, this guy, and it's always a guy that does creepy crap. A guy will sleep with a girl with one eye in the center of her head and then call his friends going, oh no, she was focused, I'm telling you. <laughs> this guy, and this is so true, it's so creepy that someone could even do it. This guy put a live, a live eel in his ass. That's crossing the line. <laughs> That's the line. He put a live eel in his ass and it got stuck and wedged up in his ass and he had to go to the hospital to have her removed, which has to be the most embarrassing moment in anybody's life. You cannot live that down. And I'm thinking if that was me, before I went to the hospital, I would have to break my wrist first. 
right? And, and when I got to the hospital, when I got to the hospital, I go, look, while I'm here, can you check to see if there's a live eel in my ass? You guys are great, thank you. Okay.